Alrighty, opera in our own way. We're going to talk a little bit about Carmen Jones and Dorothy Dandridge, as well as Arthur Lawrence, West Side Story, Jerome Robbins, all kinds of all-stars today. Um, so it's a blurry distinction. Don't get bogged down. Um, I'm telling you some things about musicals and opera and it's kind of up to you where to draw your boundaries as long as it's defensible. I'm not going to ask you some kind of gotcha question about any of this. Um, so, you know, if you think of Leonard Bernstein, um, Candide is often considered much closer to opera, partly because of orchestration and because of the difficulty of particular arias. Um, possibly also the subject matter. It's based on uh, Voltaire's um, 18th century satirical novella, Candide, um, philosophical satirical novella. Um, and then West Side Story has a lot more sort of, I guess, populist quality to it. It seems more like an operatic musical than a musical opera. Um, dance is also much more important in West Side Story, so that could also be a tipping point. Um, these distinctions can blur, again, supporting your own case is important. I did want to make sure you had access to some things from Candide. Um, Candide's a lot of fun, and it can be done in kind of a musical theater kind of way. Um, I saw it in London uh, during one of the revivals of it. And, um, you know, that it was really well done. Um, but if you look at Glitter and Be Gay, that's a well-known soprano um, aria or an art song. Um, it's not quite like a da capo aria or anything like that. But um, here's it's a video there of Kristen Chenoweth, who is normally a musical theater actress, singing it. Um, but she does seem more like it's an operatic performance. Um, Make Our Garden Grow is the uh, famous finale to it. Um, part of what I want you to notice in listening to that is some of the similarity to orchestration in West Side Story, but how it's used in a different context. Um, Make Our Garden Grow is also just beautiful and I want you to hear it. Um, another uh, work that kind of troubles the boundaries of opera and musicals is Carmen Jones. So, you know, there's an opera called Carmen by Georges Bizet. Um, and that's, you know, that's not debatable that it was uh, an opera. And Carmen Jones, um, I the way I describe it here, I think is, you know, as an opera adaptation that devotees of musicals enjoyed. Um, basically, they had an African-American cast and they set it in World War II. Um, so it's the story of a woman who kind of, you know, is a femme fatale named Carmen Jones, um, you know, who falls in love with a good looking man she can't have and tragedy ensues. Um, it was, uh, obviously, Bizet had also already written the music and Hammerstein adapted it. So um, one really important thing about it was that it helped Dorothy Dandridge to break down some pretty big barriers. Um, it helped launch her career. If you see um, the video below of uh, That's Love, she's absolutely stunning. The guy she falls in love with is played by Harry Belafonte. Um, who was also just as handsome as he got at that at that time. So really just beautiful people. Um, there really weren't enough film roles for black leading ladies at the time. Those of us with brains like to say things like, maybe some people should have written more roles for her. And you'd be right. Um, at the same time, it was hard for her to have a full and rich career. Um, you know, she had advisors telling her, you know, don't take don't take those supporting roles. You're just going to be second billing, blah, blah, blah. And that ended up working against her because she didn't work as much. Um, at least two of the supporting roles she turned down ended up 
being taken by Rita Moreno, uh, who plays Anita in West Side Story and who has had a very long career. She's still acting. She's in her like 80s and looks stunning. So, you know, good job. Take those dance lessons, you know, it'll, uh, you know, it'll, it'll keep you youthful. Um, but back to Dantra, she was the first black actress to be nominated for a Best Leading Actress Oscar. Um, that's incredibly important. Um, there were several clubs. Obviously, she's, you know, was an excellent singer and performer. And lots of clubs wanted her to headline. Um, and then after she had kind of broken down those barriers, there was more integration and further black artists could, um, you know, work steadily and get good gigs um you know that's one reason why um works like carmen jones uh and porgy and bess even though they are not necessarily informed by the black a black community i mean it's just like some white guy kind of adapting something it's problematic um at the same time if you are mandating uh, in casting and licensing that you have to have a black cast, that creates career opportunities, that creates a lot of um, work. And that's, you know, that's not insignificant. It's kind of like the way Hamilton did. People found Hamilton, you know, many people found Hamilton great, many people also found it problematic. Um, it launched so many careers for people. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to separate out, um, musicals as a financial reality, uh, for people. So, um, you know, giving, uh, black artists a start, giving them work, uh, you know, especially if it's something that's kind of a fun, uh, romantic role, um, can be a little bit better. Porgy and Bess is more problematic than that, though. Um, so yeah, uh, just to contrast, listen to La Habanera from this, the opera Carmen. Uh, this is Maria Callas singing it. She's, um, you know, very well-known opera singer. The first part of that video is just background music, so you can skip a bit if you need to. Um, and then finally, a clip of Dandridge singing That's Love. Arthur Lawrence is one of the people I have grown to appreciate more and more over time, and he is not often talked about as an important creative force. Um, he wrote training films during World War II. Um, he, I think, was openly bisexual, if not gay. He had a long-term relationship with a woman as well as with a man. Um, and uh, started in screenwriting, writing training films, and then he wrote the screenplay for Rope by Alfred Hitchcock, which is a thinly veiled queer narrative about uh, two men who want to commit the perfect murder. And it's very, very obvious that they are in a relationship with one another, and everyone they know knows they are in a relationship with one another, and it's kind of fascinating and compelling. So definitely watch it um, at some time if you get the chance. I put a little bonus down here. Um, obviously, I can't send a link to the entire movie. It's copyright issues. Um, but someone edited together all the, all the queer innuendos. And it's like two minutes of these guys just saying things to each other. It's kind of funny. Um, iconic musicals, um, West Side Story, um, another uh, musical beginning with AG that we're going to read li uh, later in this class. Uh, La Cage au Foll or The Birdcage, if you ever uh, saw the film of that, that's relatively popular. Um, and I mean, he was also writing queer content during a time of intense censorship uh, and continued to do so for the rest of his life, whether or not it was censored and directed different productions of all the musicals he wrote. Um, and, you know, as someone who is taking risks with gender and sexuality, uh, but often isn't giving credit for doing so, I wanted to make sure we paid attention to him as well. So, um, when you see his name, just remember to notice. 
Jerome Robbins, far more famous, um, worked with well-known choreographers. Uh, Georges Balanchine isn't somebody we're necessarily talking about in here, but certainly is worth uh, exploring independently. He also worked with Agnes DeMille um, and collaborated with Leonard Bernstein uh, on, with On the Town, Fancy Free, all these things. Um, he fused ballet and modern dance as DeMille had. Um, one thing is that he would turn up the difficulty a bit. Another thing is that character and dance would be very tightly fused together. I mean, to the point where he'd say, well, how does your character walk and how does your character move? And how, it, which is not something that you see in some older shows. I mean, in Anything Goes, you know, the character saying anything goes and then you just start tap dancing along with all the other people who are tap dancing. But uh, West Side Story is different and you'll notice that when you see it. Um, and it was very unusual for casting demands that all the actors had to sing and dance and act because a range was required for all of those things. Um, if you've ever been in shows before, um, you know to be nervous when it's this kind of thing, because most people can't do all three really well. Um, one thing that's great is that there are still people around who were young when West Side Story first came out, and uh, there are interviews that survive. So there's Rita Moreno talking about her character Anita, and Grover Dale, uh, who was one of the male... Um, gang members in West Side Story talking about his experience working with him. Um, so the show itself, adaptation of Romeo and Juliet set among rival street gangs in the poorer parts of New York. Uh, one set is mostly like um, Italian immigrants and the other side is Puerto Rican immigrants. Um, Tony uh, and Maria fall in love, uh, but they have to keep their relationship secret. Tragedy ensues, kind of like Romeo and Juliet. Um, there's difficulty from all sides. Um, you know, it's a tragedy, but you know, the orchestration is incredibly challenging. The dance is challenging, the vocal parts too. Um, in the original film of it, actually, they had a woman named Marnie Nixon who sang dubbed over vocal parts because Natalie Wood, you know, she could act and she could dance and she could sing a little, but she couldn't sing this demanding a part. Um, definitely watch these excerpts, watch the show. I mean, the the leaping ability of some of these male dancers is incredible. Um, it's not just about watch the dancing girls. It's about see how human bodies can move. Um, and, you know, the singing is amazing. Um, the chemistry of the back and forth between the men and the women in America um, is, is always fun to watch. Uh, tonight, the quintet especially is just brilliant. And, you know, at some point it doesn't even necessarily matter is it an opera or is it a musical? Because it's still, when you look at that and you hear it, art. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll see you next time.